Hey then guys, welcome to the latest uh, cook along video for your Dino Home Box. Uh, this week is a sellout again, so thank you to every single person who has ordered a box this week. Uh, without further ado, we'll crack straight on. No, no time like the present. So your first, uh, your first little taste, as always, guys, is your uh, is your Dino Home loaf, which uh, we've pretty much standardised this loaf now. This is a beautiful uh, Cotswold Crunch loaf, which has nine different seeds in. Uh, it, just, it just proves lovely, bakes lovely, and it rebakes lovely as well. So in your oven, 180 degrees for five minutes. Uh, that should come out nice and warm inside, nice and crispy on the outside. It's delicious. And obviously, as you all know, people who are return, returning customers would know this is a Marmite butter, a signature butter to go with the uh, with the Dino Home bread. And uh, just make sure you keep that out at room temperature. Uh, not too hot, just so it keeps nice and soft. And uh, that'll be beautiful with your uh, with your bread. So on to the starter guys, at first for the Dino Home, we've, uh, we've given our shot at a spring roll this week. Uh, the dish entirely is the same. We have a duck, hoisin duck spring roll, and we also have a, a hoisin vegetable spring roll as well. I'm going to showcase the vegetable spring roll uh, in this particular video, but you reheat it the exact same way. All I would say is potentially with the duck, you may need to reheat it for a little bit longer. It will come in a, in a beautiful little silver takeaway tray like that. I would recommend just placing all that into your oven. Don't worry about it, putting it onto a different tray. I think it'll be absolutely fine on there. Um, but obviously you will receive it a little bit soft because obviously it's been in the fridge and, and so on and so forth. So just make sure you're crisping it back up. It can potentially stick to the bottom of the tray. Uh, so if you are a little bit wary of that, just put a little bit of grease in paper. Otherwise, into your oven between eight to 10 minutes, um, probably seven minutes for the vegetarian, but eight to 10 minutes for the duck. And if you're a little bit nervous about it, ensuring that it's hot, just obviously pierce it with a knife and then just put it on the old the bottom of the lip as soon as it's nice and warm or nice and hot, should I say, be ready to plate. So I'm gonna pop this in the oven for seven minutes. Join me in seven minutes and I'll go for the garnish. Okay guys, so the time has gone off on the spring roll, so I'll grab that now. And there we are, it's crisp and beautifully back up. And I said to you on the, on the instruction card, <clears throat> there might be some excess oil, because obviously we deep fried them, so there might be some excess oil on the outside. So I'll simply, if you pan down, uh, you'll see we simply just pop that onto a nice blue towel. Not too much excess oil at all, as you can see by the blue towel. Um, but just to give that a roll off, obviously you don't want any of that sort of excess on the uh, on your plate. So that's there. While we while that's in the uh, just draining on the uh, blue towel, you have a little pot of salad. Uh, so it's a, this is some uh, bean sprouts and some monge too as well in there. Uh, we've denatured both of those. Uh, the bean sprouts have gone obviously naturally quite soft, but I've, I've left the I've left the um, monge too quite sort of like raw. Uh, because it needs to add that texture to the salad as well, like a nice crisp uh, salad, nice crisp texture to it. Uh, there's some pickled carrots. The reason why we've kept those separate just for the actual uh, delivery of the boxes is simply because um, if I add the pickled element to uh, the rest of the salad, it would turn the salad into a whole pickled salad, which you don't want. And then uh, finally, the two items. I've gone really generous on the peanut satay because it's literally one of my favorite things I've ever put in my mouth. Absolutely love it. And then a beautiful sweet chili dressing which is a little bit similar to the, sort of the, the bottled sweet chili. Uh, it's made with corn flour. So it has got a little bit more of a texture to it to the, the previous one that I made with oil. This one is just uh, sort of rice wine, vinegar, chili, sugar, uh, but nowhere near as sweet. Uh, it is a delicious flavor actually, but it is a little bit thicker, uh, which will actually connect to the uh, salad a lot better and a lot easier. So I'm just gonna pop this satay because I want mine a little bit warm. So I'm pop this satay in the uh, microwave for about 20 seconds. And then uh, when you come back, I will then uh, plate the whole dish for you, uh, just so I get everything nice and warm, that's all. So I've seen about, about 30 seconds, uh, just have a done that. When you come back, I'll show you how to season the salad. Okay, satay is beautiful hot, beautiful and hot. So pan down, I will show you how to uh, recreate this dish. So salad, as always, guys, you can, you can literally use this uh, sweet chili sauce to season your salad. That's absolutely fine if you prefer to. No problem at all. I am a little bit of a stickler. I would prefer to season my salad with a little bit of oil. Uh, so I'm gonna do that. You can use sesame oil if you have sesame oil. Sesame oil would actually probably be better with an extra virgin, to be honest, but I just, um, it's not a recommendation. It's just a preference for me, uh, but I would definitely uh, recommend if you do want to use oil, I would recommend uh, sesame oil if you have it. So give that a nice mix and all those vibrant colors. Make sure the pickled carrots all sort of separate as well and go through it nice and evenly. And then, as you can see, the satay sauce, nice and thick. And I'm going to put this right on the bottom of the plate. And the reason being is it will encourage you every single mouthful you have, it will uh, it'll encourage you to um, to include the satay in that. So again, don't be shy. 
if you like satay, you'll absolutely love that. I'm just going to put my spoon roll just off the centre. And I'm going to put my salad. So I've tossed quite a lot, quite a large, large salad to be fair. Fill that up nicely. Finish it all off with a sweet chilli sauce. So it's quite thick, so this sort of this sort of dot now as it comes up all around, and a nice bit of heat. So the dish is well. Clean it up. So again, first for uh, for dining at home, beautiful. This is a vegetable version. This is a vegetable spring roll, seasoned with hoisin, a nice uh, peanut satay underneath. An acidulated salad with uh, pickled carrots, monge to, and sugar snaps. Uh, sorry, and um, what are they called? Bean sprouts. That's it, bean sprouts. Sorry, <laughs> completely left my brain then. And then uh, finished up with your sweet chili sauce. Guys, enjoy that and then join us uh, in Bog well, after you finish that for your main course. Okay, guys, so hopefully you enjoyed your start. So sorry about the bean sprouts, just literally monge to just fuck me over, sugar snaps and so on and so forth. So yeah, bean sprouts, monge to and carrots. Okay, so on to your main course. Uh, we are going for the delicious rump uh, of beef and it is uh, been, has, has been brined, barbecued and uh, marinated in a beautiful smoke paprika and garlic marinade. Uh, and then we've also steamed it for uh, an hour and a half at uh, 60 degrees to break it all down. So it literally leaves you to simply cut the packet, put it onto a tray and into the oven. That's it, so, so simple. It's already cooked, all you're doing is reheating it. Because it's been cooked at such a low temperature, um, essentially in the steamer, it will, um, you know, it will, it will just stay that sort of pink, medium rare, mid to medium uh, sort of cuisson, which is absolutely ideal. Uh, with the vegetarian, is a, is a beautiful barbecued uh, aubergine steak, which I've treated the exact same way. Um, other than I haven't obviously steamed it because it will just make, need you to finish the, the cooking off. So please be careful, this is obviously for one person. If the linen is absolutely beautifully marinated and roasted and smoked, and it smells right, it smells absolutely incredible. So that is your vegetarian main course, which is treated exactly the same way. Straight into a tray or leave it in, leave it in. You can leave it in there, absolutely fine. Into the oven for about six to seven to eight minutes for the aubergine. And for the beef, I'd recommend, because that's obviously for one person. So one person, about the same, about eight to 10 minutes. And for a double piece, which you're obviously gonna share, I would say between, so 12 minutes is fine. Uh, 15, if you like it a little bit more well done. So onto the garnish, guys. So pan down, I'll go through both, obviously the vegetarian and the, uh, and obviously the meat option as well. What I will do straight away for the nature of this video, I will actually put the beef straight in uh, and then talk you through the garnish as we speak. So very simply, pop your beef in. There's normally a fat side, which is on there. You can see the fat layer that's there. And then put all that smell is absolutely unbelievable. So pop all that on top, just like that. And then that goes into the oven at 180 degrees and I'll put it for about eight to 10 minutes. So that goes into the oven, get rid of that. So your garnish while that is in is a pot of beef fat roasted hash potatoes. For the vegetarian, we have roasted hash potatoes. They've been done in vegetable oil. Uh, they've done it in beef. They've done it in beef uh, um, fat. That's done exactly the same, guys. So that will take about eight to 10 minutes to reheat as well at 180. So we're gonna put them in pretty sharpishly as well. The two sauces, you have a barbecue beef sauce. We've essentially uh, started uh, roasting up the beef bones with some smoked paprika, uh, a little bit of cumin, uh, some normal paprika, some cayenne, so it gives that barbecue flavor, but essentially still a beef jus, absolutely stunning. And then you've also got the similar sort of context as the barbecue beef, obviously without the beef, we've made like a homemade sort of barbecue sauce, which essentially can be plated very similar to the, uh, to the satay sauce. So put that sort of on your plate first, just gently warm it, and then plate all your vegetarian dishes on top, elements on top, and it'll be absolutely delicious, that one. So that's the uh, the end of the difference. Then the, the exact same garnish is uh, char-grilled spring onion, which I've literally just char-grilled it and seasoned it. That's it, so that's ready for the oven. That'll take about four minutes. So just plan your timing well. Then you've got some delicious cream corn, which has got some chili and some coriander through it. And you also have a beautiful 
roasted sweet corn puree as well. Reheat the corn puree in, uh, sorry, reheat the corn, uh, cream corn in a pan and reheat the sweet corn puree in the microwave. And that is it. So I'm gonna put my potatoes straight in. They'll have about eight minutes. And then I'm gonna take the uh, beef out and the beef's come out. I'm gonna add the spring onion to the same tray as the potatoes just for three to four minutes while the beef's resting. But join me after the beef's finished and I will then uh, put the spring onion in and show you how to rest your beef. So see you in about eight minutes. Okay guys, so my timer on the eight minute timer on the oven has just gone off for the beef. So I'm gonna grab the beef out now. My potatoes are still in, which I will now add this to the same tray as the potatoes, okay? Okay, so that'll be another three minutes. And while this is resting, you can see the smells are incredible. Obviously the, the sort of marinade has obviously sort of you know, kept encapsulated the whole entire piece of rum. It's sort of springy, which springs back straight away. So it just basically tells me that it's completely reheated, but it needs that time to rest as well. So four minutes should be absolutely perfect. So that's gonna rest for four minutes on the same tray. I put my sauce and my creamed sweet corn in two separate pans. And I just put my spring onion in the oven with the potatoes, which will be four minutes. So in the meantime, just as, I'm gonna, just as the four minutes is gonna go off, I'm gonna pop that in the microwave, which is a sweet corn puree just to heat through. And I'm gonna pop my cream corn and my sauce on to heat through as well. So join me in four minutes and all that's done, and I'll go through plating. Okay guys, so my timer is just about to go off on the oven. I've literally just put my sweet corn puree in the microwave and that's just come out. The, uh, there we are. Horrible noise. Uh, and my cream corn has just come up to the heat as well and my sauce has literally just come up to a simmer as well. So I'm all pretty much ready to go. So I'm gonna have my tray out the oven now. The onion potatoes, you can see the potatoes have roasted up absolutely beautifully. Nice and crispy, like a proper hashed potato. And then obviously your spring onion, which I've actually kept in the tray as well, has heated through beautifully as well. So I'll pop those just over here. Um, my steak is obviously nice and rested now and just relaxed a little bit. So that's all ready and started to sort of, some of the liquid has started to come out as well. So I'm gonna pop that onto my board, ready for slicing. And then my hash to the side, and I'm gonna grab both cream corn, cream corn first beautiful and hot as well as you can see sweet corn purees down there and we're pretty much ready to plate all right so uh, again guys as i always say the plating is totally up to you however you like to plate i've sort of gone for a sort of american vibe as you can probably tell by the ingredients with the sweet corn and, and obviously the, the sort of brisket style beef rum um, just give that a nice stir as well because it's super rich these sweet corn purees um, so basically I would, what I'm going to plate is I'm going to put my sweet corn sort of cream to one side, I'm going to put the rump steak on top and then sort of the condiments all, all in and around as well. Uh, but again guys, you can plate it however you like, you can, you, can do, you can do everything separate. You can plate it all and then obviously at the table you can slice your beef. It's literally totally to you. But everything has been seasoned as well, so you shouldn't need to season anything. Obviously the beef has been brined, so again you shouldn't need to uh, don't need to do anything with that either. So with the beef, you'll see the strands that go in sort of this way. So you want to go against that. So we can either go slice it that way, or we can slice it against it this way. So I'm going to go lengthways, just so it'll show off the crease on a little bit more. It's a little bit of fat, as you can see that looks. It's cooked perfectly, beautiful heat, but I can't express enough uh, that wouldn't be achieved without that rest at all. So that's absolutely perfect. It's beautifully seasoned because obviously I've brined it. So I'll place that right on top of the sweet corn. And when you go in again, it will encourage you to eat it all together. A couple of the, a few of the hashed potatoes, I'm quite heavy on the portion with there, so we don't need all of those. A couple of the hashed potatoes and then sweet corn puree. Just underneath, good mix, beautiful, right up front, and then beautiful sweet onion, covering all that up as well, and finally, barbecue sauce, which just smells just like, just like barbecue as well, all over your meat. All over the dish as well. 
So uh, and there's your main course guys that I think you're going to be absolutely delighted with. Delicious brine barbecued and it's steamed rum, which if it's roasted in the oven, cooked beautifully, medium to medium rare. Underneath your cream corn, scented with a bit of chili and coriander. Your roasted beef fat hashed potatoes, your sweet corn puree, charred spring onion, finished off with a beautiful uh, barbecue sauce. Guys, enjoy and join me after that for your dessert. Okay guys, hopefully you enjoyed your main course. I thought the texture of the beef was super, especially being a rump. Uh, the flavour was super strong in the sauce as well, all married really well. So hopefully you enjoyed it as well. And equally to the vegetarians, hope the aubergine went really well with that uh, sort of freestyle barbecue sauce as well. So on to dessert then guys, uh, which is again a first for, uh, for dine at home, which is a beautiful uh, raspberry eclair. So the eclair is essentially a shoe pastry uh, that were baked uh, with a little bit of red food colouring and also some uh, raspberry essence as well. So it has got a tight, like a taint smell of raspberry, but equally when you cut inside it, which I'll show you obviously in a second, uh, there'll be like a nice little red tinge to it as well, so just to carry on that raspberry flavor. And you also have a beautiful raspberry gel, which is literally fresh raspberries, that's it. Just made into a, made into a puree, essentially. Uh, and then a delicious uh, res uh, raspberry creme diplomat, uh, which is essentially a corn flour cooked out uh, sort of custard which then we've folded in some raspberry puree to it as well. Uh, you might see sort of flecks of white and that's basically where the cream mixes in with it as well. Nothing to worry about at all. It'll obviously, you, know, you, won't even, you won't even realize it on your tongue, but you will just see flecks of white through there as well. But again, so nothing to worry about at all. And then for a little bit of texture inside the eclair, we've got some delicious uh, rehydrated or freeze dried raspberry uh, raspberries as well. Please make sure they don't go in the fridge. Keep those out obviously at all times. And then there's a little sauce, a real rich decadent sauce is a beautiful white chocolate uh, sauce uh, seasoned very gently with miso. Uh, again, I would, it's up to you guys. I would recommend, I personally would recommend, so I'd personally have this at room temperature or even out the fridge uh, because it's got a lovely texture uh, and, and, and it doesn't, this, this dish doesn't need to really be hot. Or if you do, if you would like a hot element, just pop it in the microwave for 10, 20 seconds just to take the chill off and that'll be delicious as well. I'm going to, uh, I've got a couple of, I've got to basically put that into a piping bag along with that as well. So I'm going to put these back into the fridge and I'm going to pipe my uh, fillings into the eclair. Uh, but again, guys, you know, since I said it all, all the time, it's totally up to if you have got a piping bag or a, or a squirty bottle, you do, do exactly the same as well. So guys, uh, down here you will see the eclair, which essentially uh, I'm going, again, you can bait it how you want. I said a couple of guys here were saying, would you sort of pierce little holes in the bottom and then pipe in your filling, you can do that. But I think an eclair is always good if it's halved. So with a serrated knife, please be careful with your hands. Very gently go all the way through, just like that. And as promised inside, it's just got that really sort of faint uh, red tinge to it. And then I've got, I've actually got my raspberry creme pat or creme diplomat in a, in a vac vacuum pat bag. So I'm just gonna nip the corner off. And I'd, I'd personally go a little bit heavier with the creme pat. Uh, as opposed to the gel, just because it's a bit more creamy and a bit more delicious. So go quite heavy with that, and I'll go, the size of this, I'll go three blocks. If you put your loads in, obviously it is, that, is, that is for two, but you can literally see there's easily one tablespoon each in there and some. And then with your gel, I'm just gonna sort of dot that sort of in between there as well, so you just get that lovely color all around again. It doesn't really matter what it looks like because of the lid going onto it. And then just with your, I've done that the wrong way. <laughs> so that's the bottom and I've done the top, but it's all right because what we'll do is we'll flip it right around just like that. So that's what you can do. So all the fillings inside, just before I do actually finish that, I'm just gonna open it back up and just neaten it slightly. Wow, that is, that is a thick, that is a thick consistency in there, that is for sure. And then with your raspberry sort of freeze dry, just put those in for that little bit of raspberry texture. I'm just gonna just loop that inside. There we are. Just open it up so you can sort of see the, the filling. I'm gonna pop that right on the plate. This is definitely a, a taster more than a looker, that's for sure. And then with your spoon, again, as I said, I'll definitely have this at room temperature. Super thick, but if you give it a good mix, it should start to go turn into a bit more of a liquid. Wow, that's incredible. A nice salty sort of miso. Now essentially just pour that all over the front of your eclair. As you spread it, that's definitely not going to go 
uh, win any Instagram uh, Instagram awards, but what it will do is might win some taste awards. So your beautiful raspberry clear, raspberry creme fat, raspberry gel, white chocolate and miso sauce. I said, guys, let's see your creations. Hopefully it looks better than that, but uh, then again, it's all in the flavor. And that concludes your cook along for this week, guys. Thank you to everyone who's purchased the box. Grand finale is obviously your dine at home fudge, which I would recommend to have a little bit more than sea salt if you do. If not, obviously it's absolutely delicious on its own or paired with a drink after your meal. Again, it will keep in the fridge for a good couple of weeks because uh, of the sugar content, so you're absolutely fine to keep that if you have any room. And that is it, guys. Next week, we've got a barbecue uh, here at Time, so we got, we're going we're to knock the boxes on the head for next week, but we'll return the week after. Uh, next week, we've got a barbecue, which is Saturday and Sunday. Saturday is uh, 4 till 8, and Sunday is 2 till 6 here at Time in uh, Kerber Farm in Litchfield. Uh, booking is essential, uh, but if you were to come along on a Saturday or Sunday at those times, I'm sure I'll be able to squeeze out a couple of hot dogs and lamb shawarmas at the same time. So a fantastic weekend. Thank you again for purchasing a box and we'll see you same time, same place in two weeks.